Welcome back to Tabarua Island for the final day of the Globe Pro Fiji 2008. What a day it was. You know, we had to wait around a little bit for the swell to come, and when it finally did, we got a little weather with it. But that didn't stop our competitors from lighting things up out of cloud break, starting with our quarterfinal matchups today. Here's how it went down. Quarterfinal number one was a matchup between Taj Burrow and B. Durbage, the two Australians fighting tooth and nail all the way through to keep their title hopes alive in this one. Durbage came into Fiji rated third in the world and was relying on his powerful backhand attack to keep him in that lofty position. But Burrow would respond with his textbook rapid fire approach, enticing the judges with his speed and flair. This one would go down to the wire, with Bede getting one last gasp in the closing minute, but it wasn't enough to stop Taj. Burrow moved on into semi-final number one. A flurry of waves towards the end and you know the scores weren't rolling in as fast as we hoped, so we're like going, what's going on, what's going on, me and Bede looking at each other like, did you get a good one? And he's like, did you get a good one? So we kind of talked at each other through our waves <laughs> and uh, we both said we got a, you know, a decent one, so we had to sit there and wait for the scores, but uh, fortunately for me, it, it was, uh, I got a bit higher score. The next quarterfinal was a highly anticipated match between Bobby Martinez and Kelly Slater. And Martinez would open up with a huge 9.0, immediately putting the champ on the defensive. But midway through the heat, Kelly got himself a 6.0, keeping him within striking distance all the way through. Then, in the closing moments, Slater capitalized on a Martinez error, when Martinez used his priority on a smaller insider. Martinez would turn around to see his worst nightmare coming true. Kelly Slater in the tube and then out, flying right into the semifinals. caught a, a small one and I paddled back out and Bobby, Bobby got that nine. It was just the best wave that had come in yet and uh, you know I just probably needed to be a little more patient would have been on that one but then you know he was super patient at the end and a set came and it was always the second wave that was the best and he took the first one and so I got a barrel and a couple turns and it was just a little flip-flop battle there. Quarterfinal number three saw CJ Hobgood facing up with the current world champion, Mick Fanning. And Hobgood was simply masterful in this one, as he seemed to not only find every good wave in the heat, but he ripped them to shreds as well. Champ would do his best to respond, but he really wasn't a match for CJ in this one, as this quickly turned into a rout.
Hobgood looking very inspired, moving on into the semifinal. Yeah, no, that's what I mean, where you kind of like, you're doing your turns, but you, you still feel like you're in control, but it, you're almost out of control a little bit. So uh, there's always a fine little balance there. And, um, but no, I felt like I was in control and then I was able to come off the, some of those turns and able to squeak into a barrel and then do some more turns. So uh, I felt like um, I was reading the wave pretty good and, and I was stoked. In quarterfinal number four, it was Joel Parkinson, rated second in the world, who desperately needed to keep pace with Slater, especially after B. Durbage had dropped out earlier in this round. But he'd have his work cut out for him versus Adriano de Souza. And though the lead would change hands twice in this heat, Parco's last minute backup was only a 4.8 leaving the door open for D'Souza. D'Souza capitalized and made his way into the semifinal. It's great, it's the best result I've ever had. I got th third on my first seed and on my first event. And uh, right now I'm gonna some fun with the CJ how good for me is the best surf in the cloud break ever. And uh, definitely gonna be a really good heat. Semi-final number one was a showdown between Taj and Kelly, two guys who have been in form all week here on Tavarua. Slater opened up though with a big 9.33, putting the pressure on Taj with this huge pit. Taj found himself in a combination situation midway through the heat, but would bring things back to within striking distance with this series of huge floaters that earned him a 7.67. But of course Slater wasn't done yet, turning what looked like your average mush ball up the reef into one of the best rides of the day with another 9, this one even better, a 9.37, sending Slater into his third final in four events. I feel like as each heat's progressed I have, I have actually gotten less nervous. For some reason I was kind of nervous against Aki and, and uh, in that Bobby heat too, just, I just didn't feel like myself, but uh, now I feel pretty good and relaxed. and. You know, I'll have Adriano or, or CJ, you know, I'd imagine CJ's, CJ's the guy out here, so I would imagine it'd be him, but you know, Adriano can pull the upset. He's done it a few times in this contest. The next matchup in semifinal number two, it was CJ Hobgood versus Adriano de Souza, and CJ started right where he left off. CJ would try to keep the momentum moving, picking off an early one, but Hobgood would come firing back with this gaping tube into a massive floater, earning himself a 9.87. Of course, CJ would follow that up with more, ending Adriano's incredible run here on Tabarua and making the 2008 finals here a repeat of 2005, with Slater and CJ matched up against each other once again. Oh, 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 oh. 
After a quick break back on the boat, the boys headed back into the lineup for the final. And Kelly Slater picked up right where he left off with solid back-to-back -back scores right out of the gate. Slater was looking more determined than ever with some very brilliant surfing. CJ was looking for answers, but having trouble finding them in the early going. Slater would pile it on, putting Hobgood in a combo situation after this wave. But Hobgood would claw his way back, giving himself the faintest of chances with time running out after the King was not to be denied, winning at Tabarua with impressive victories over a number of Tabarua's best. With his third victory in four events, Slater is on quite the run. He has yet to lose to a world title surfer this year, and Slater is looking pretty solid for his ninth world title. Really in disbelief, I gotta sit down and think about this for a little while. It, uh, it all kind of happened so suddenly. I really got out in the lead real quick in that heat. Um, you know, halfway through, I pretty much had my scores. Uh, you know, if we're looking on paper, on paper I, had, I had to go through the hardest draw. I mean, I had CJ in the final, Taj in the semi, Bobby before that, Damien before that. I mean, that's a, uh, you, you know, you don't want to come up against those guys four in a row. So, you know, I was lucky to dodge a bullet with Bobby and, and, uh, you know, get myself back in gear for that semi. You know, he, he kind of had that feeling too when I asked him at the end of the heat. I mean, he was like, hey, you get this feeling like you, there's, you missed a lot of waves and there's a lot left out here. I go, man, I had the same sickening feeling. So, uh, yeah, I mean, after the final, I, you know, it was a bit harder to take when that happens, but um, I just was in bad rhythm and um, it sucked that I, uh, you know, picked the final to get into a really bad rhythm. And, uh, you know, he went out there and uh, handed it to me. So, uh, yeah, it was a rematch and it was the same outcome. And, uh, I told him, bro, let's have a repeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> Only three away, right? Huh? Only three wins away. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's all good, man. I'm back in the hunt for second place. That's probably about it. <laughs> well, I got to go and experience it with the uh, girls in the kitchen over there. They start crying and stuff. They get all emotional. They're stoked. You know, I'm, I've known them all for like 18 years now. Coming here, and um, you know, for me, it's that the win's better just because I get to share it with them. You know, it's I, it's almost like the only reason I want to win is just so I can go back in there and give them a hug and take a picture. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. They kicked off the award ceremony with the Freestyle Tube Time Award, and the winner this year, Mick Fanning, with this impressive 12-second tube ride 
at restaurants on day one of competition. So that is a wrap. The Globe Pro Fiji is over. Event number four on the ASP World Tour in the books now. Congratulations to Kelly Slater and CJ Hobgood for a stellar performance. We hope you all enjoyed this as much as we did. We're going to be right back here next year. We hope you will be too. You